Okay, this is not the ideal way to record a video, but we will make it work. So the first thing I'm going to explain is the rolls array. So this is a 21 element array and you reuse it for each player to keep track of the number of pins they knock down each time they roll the bowling ball, so each roll. So this starts at zero. I'm not gonna do every single element, but zero, one, two, I'll go up to five, three, four, five. I would draw this out on lined paper all the way down to 20. So here is 20, 19, and 18. So up here, roll zero and roll one in the rolls array. So again, this is the rolls array. This represents frame one and index zero is frame one roll one and index one is frame one roll two so here we have another frame this will be frame two then we have frame three all the way down to the very last frame here remember is special and so it has three slots here because of three rolls potentially. So this is frame 10 with roll one, two, and three. So let's say in the very first frame you knock down two pins and then you knock down three pins. So nothing super special. Then the next frame you knock down nine pins and then one pin, so that's a spare. Remember this is roll one and roll two for frame two. Then frame three, let's say you knock down all 10 pins, that is a strike. And so because this is a strike, this is still frame three, this roll is not used. So this is roll one and this is roll two for frame three, but we don't use roll two. So instead of leaving it blank, put a zero right here. All right, and this continues all the way down to frame 10. So with frame 10, we have a roll one, roll two, and roll three. So if you ever roll a strike, then if you don't use that next roll because you've rolled a strike, you put a zero right here. So that is the rolls array. I just wanted to explain that before I got into the program. All right, so in this program, you are scoring bowling for multiple people. So this rolls array will get reused for each person. This is just temporary storage of data. You're gonna use it to collect all of the data of this player's game. And then using all this data, you'll calculate your score. That's what you save off into a scores vector and then you don't need to use this again. All right, so for the program itself, you are going to ask for the player's name over and over and over again, um, along with their data. And when you do that, you'll calculate their score. And whenever you type a done, that's when we are done entering data and you'll have print statements that print everything out to the screen. So I would start off working on the name data and just the simple part of asking for a name and seeing if you have typed done or not, and then exiting out of that part of your code to print who won or their scores. So one way you can do this is you could do like a while true loop. You could check to see if the variable you're using that is uh, getting names, if that is equal to done, um, but that should be in some sort of while loop because we don't know 
where that stops. And I'm gonna break this down into different parts. So part one in an outline, this is inside that loop. We are going to, this is about names. You are going to ask for the name. And then if you read in done, then you wanna to check to see if the vector is empty, the names vector, because that means you didn't enter any names. Vector is empty. So that's special case. And if you are done, you wanna break out of this while loop. All right, if you, once you ask for the name, if they didn't type in done, obviously you'll wanna store that in our names vector. So once you get the name, then you want to gather and store data. So again, I would test this part, write this out and see if you can get this working before you move on to gather and store data. And the same thing, once you write gather and store data, then I would print out all of your data and make sure that everything that you stored when you print it out is what you expect to store so you can break this up in smaller pieces. So the first thing you do is we're looking at gathering this information to store in our roles array. And for every frame, so for frame one, for frame two, for frame three, we're always going to have at least a role one. So we know we can ask for role one. There's not always a role two that we'll ask for because if you have a strike, you're not gonna have a role two, but you always know you're going to have a role one. So for every frame, there's always going to be a role one. So you can or you cannot write a for loop counting by frame, you might wanna do it by role, but this is just in English. You'll always have a roll one and you'll wanna save that. So always ask for roll one and save. Now roll two and three is not guaranteed So that's a little bit different. And this is where you want to take in consideration if you will have a potential rule three. So if we're in a frame that is one through nine, this is just looking for a potential rule two. And if you're in frame 10, this is like the weirdest case where you could have a rule two or a rule three. So if you have, if you're in frame 10, then you can ask for roll two or three. The three is potential. And then if you're not in frame 10, then that means you must be in frame one through nine. So this is going to be frame one through nine. And you want to figure out if you should have a roll two and ask for it, or if you need to put a zero for roll two. So you need to figure out if the frame one is a strike, that's pretty easy because if frame, sorry, if roll one is a strike, that is a 10. So if you had a strike in roll one, then you're not gonna print anything for roll two. So if you're in frame one through nine, if you're not in frame 10, then if the frame is a strike, that would be in roll one. So we put a zero for roll two.
And now if you're in frame one through nine and you're not putting a zero for roll two, that means that you have some pins left. So you'll ask for roll two and store it. So this means frame one through nine, not strike. We need to ask for roll two. And maybe roll two is a zero as well. Maybe they didn't knock down any pins, but they have the option of having a roll two. So gathering and storing all of this data, this is again in your rolls array right here. And then once you have all of this, I would stop and print out, just do one player, put in some data, and then do a little for loop that goes through the rolls array and print that out to the screen to make sure that it's working. Once you get that working, then you will calculate the score for that particular player. You don't want to calculate as you accumulate. It's really tough with bowling rules. So you have to gather all of the data first, gather and store. This is all data for one player. And you wanna do that before you calculate the score for that player. So the next thing, once we have all the data, is calculate the score. This is the total score for this particular player and we will store it. So we store this in parallel vectors. You already are pushbacking a name right here for the names vector. And so in this loop, you'll push back name and then you'll push back score. So your players and your scores should have the same index for each person. So like players sub i and scores sub i these would be parallel. So if Bob scored a 120, then Bob would be like, uh, let's say index zero. So Bob's score would be held at index zero in the scores vector if he is index zero in the players vector. All right, so for calculating the total scores, this is a little more explicit. So I'm gonna be a little less explicit here, but talk about the cases. So you wanna think about the weird cases and the easiest way to do this is to think about the weirdest thing first and have your if statement of if the weirdest thing and then else if the less weird thing and else if the slightly less weird thing and then the normal thing. So that way you can take of the strangest things first. And then if you don't hit that strangest thing, then you know you're in the category of all your less stranger things. So it's a good way to approach it. There are other ways, but I'm saying if you have the weirdest case, do very particular stuff. And then that means if you hop down here, you know you've ruled out the strangest thing out. So this is like weirder. This would be do other stuff. And that would continue and then what finally falls into the else statement is just the normal or the standard code or algorithm that you would do. So when calculating the score, if strikes and spares and double strikes didn't exist, then it would just be adding everything up, but strikes and spares have special rules. So we have rolling like, call this standard. So this would be standard. This would be one way to score. But then if you have a spare right here, that would be a separate case that you'd have to consider. And then a strike would be a separate case. And then a double strike would be a separate case too. So think of standard strike spare and then double strike and what you would do in each case and when does the double strike apply? So what frames would this be in? So just a hint that it's not going to apply to every single frame. 
All right, so once you calculate the total score for that player, you'll use if and else statements and you'll go through the roles array to do this right here. And because of the spare rule and the strike rule, you'll be doing a little bit of special addition with that. But once you get that, you calculate it and you will push that back onto the scores vector. So then you will go back up and ask for the next name. Collect that person's data, calculate that score, next name, data, score. So just keep collecting everything. And let's say once you hit done, this is going to represent the end of the loop. Once you get past this line, you're done. And before this line is where we repeat over and over and over again until we get all of the players entered. And so once you're here, then we have all the info for all the players that we need. Including their total scores. So now all you have to do is see who won and follow your printing guidelines. So to see who won, you can figure that out by your scores vector right here, person with the highest score or lowest score, look up your game or your rules of bowling, and then players right here, you'll get their name, you use the same index, and then make sure to follow all the rest of the printing guidelines in the lab.